Well, if you haven't figured this out already, we love smart objects, and you should too, because there's just so many really cool possibilities. Here's something that occurred to me. I was looking at this photo, and I imagined that we wanted to do as part of, say, a portrait or a wedding photo and add some text to these rocks, make it look like it was painted on the rock. So we're going to go, uh, Tommy loves Mary. Sure. And we'll just position that roughly where we want it. Let's pick white instead of black, though. But before I do anything else, I'm now going to convert this to a smart object. So I can do that in various ways. One way is just to go to the filter menu and do it there. And now it's a smart object. So, and you'll see there's a reason why I did that. So now I can go free transform, maybe rotate it slightly. If I right click on the Windows or Control click on the Mac and choose warp, I can actually go in and kind of warp this a little bit to make it look a little more like maybe something that was painted on or hand done as opposed to something that looks too perfect. And that's one of the advantages, of course, of warping is you can do that. So let's say like that. Now, the next thing I want to do is make it actually conform to the rocks, make it look like it's point on. So I'm going to hide this for a moment and we're going to actually duplicate the image. So I'm just going to make a copy of it. I'm going to call it like stony map because it's going to be used in a filter in a moment. So I'm going to click OK and then throw away this on that layer because basically this one I need to do a couple things. I need to first of all remove the color so I'm going to desaturate it and then we'll use levels to kind of bring a bit more detail out and then basically I don't want too much detail so I'm going to use a filter. Now one, th one I found is quite helpful is to actually use the despeckle filter. It's kind of like a blur, but it just removes a little bit of detail without blurring too much. So I'm going to hit that two or three times and then save this um, out to my desktop and as a PSD. Now once I've done that, I can close it. Now what it lets me do is go back to my type layer and apply this filter called Displace. Now this is where you'll have to experiment depending on the photo and the size of everything and the detail. Um, I'm going to use these numbers 6 and 6, it might be 5 and 5, 10 and 10. I wouldn't go too much higher than that but again it will depend on the image itself. And I'll hit OK and then it asks me which map to use. And I'll go and find the one that I just made, hit open and now I see it distorts it to fit. Generally, it looks pretty good, but we need to do something else. Now, it could, depending on the color, it could be multiply, not in this case, uh, probably more like overlay. Now, the problem with overlay sometimes, like in this case, is it's a little too light. So I'm going to duplicate that smart object type layer so it's a little more noticeable and maybe lower the opacity of this one down. So now I see how it kind of looks like it's actually painted on to the stone which is kind of cool but here's the plus of this if I now have done all this work and then something changes uh, for example let's double click on this it takes me back to the original type layer and now I can say that you know they're feeling that they're not quite sure so it's going to be Tommy likes Mary you'll see that it updates automatically and if it's a really dramatic change like someone completely different, well, that's okay too because it's a smart object and it's so smart it will update but also has that smart filter with the displacement map. So lots of different possibilities. I can imagine doing this on anything with texture, a brick wall or maybe even in perspective on a beach, all kinds of different possibilities. So yet another wonderful possibility of things we can do using smart objects. In this case, a smart filter with type using displacement map. And of course it should be no surprise to you by now that you can use this for all kinds of things, not just type. Look, it's Dave on the rocks. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't resist. I'm Dave Cross. Boy, that was bad. I'll see you next time.